Hello and welcome to another teaching from 119 Ministries. Our ministry believes that the whole Bible is true and applicable to our lives today. If you'd like to learn more about what we believe and teach, please visit us at testeverything.net. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button below. We hope that you enjoy studying and testing the following teaching. Many people say that parts of God's law have passed away in light of Christ's work on the cross. That's why many believe that we no longer need to obey commandments like remember the Sabbath and don't eat unclean animals. But did these parts of God's law really pass away? Jesus, his Hebrew name being Yeshua, said no. He said that not even an iota or a dot of the law can pass away until heaven and earth pass away. Matthew chapter 5, 17 through 19. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. According to Yeshua, nothing from the law will pass away until heaven and earth pass away. So, heaven and earth stand as witnesses that the entirety of God's law still stands. Consider the following, Deuteronomy 30, verses 11, 16, and 19. Verse 11, For this commandment that I command you today is not too hard for you, neither is it far off. Verse 16, if you obey the commandments of Yahweh your God that I command you today, by loving Yahweh your God, by walking in His ways, and by keeping His commandments and His statutes and His rules. And verse 19, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live. So, since heaven and earth stand as witnesses that God's law remains in effect, the only way anyone can say that parts of God's law have passed away is if those witnesses to the law's validity have passed away. According to John, heaven and earth don't pass away until the arrival of the new heaven and earth at the end of the age. Revelation 21 verse 1 and verses 5 through 6. Verse 1, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. Verse 5, And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. Yeshua did not come to abolish the law and prophets, but to fulfill all the law and prophets. Not one iota or dot, that is, not any part of the law, will pass away until at least two criteria are met. Number one, heaven and earth pass away. Not done yet. Number two, all of the law and prophets are accomplished. Also, not done yet. As we've already seen, until heaven and earth pass away refers to the end of time as we know it. Until all is accomplished means the same thing. Nothing will pass from the law until all the prophecies recorded in Scripture come to pass, culminating in the arrival of the new heavens and new earth. Now, some might say that all was already accomplished. They will say, Yeshua clearly said on the cross, it is finished. Thus, now things can be removed from God's law. This argument is based on John chapter 19, verse 30. When Yeshua had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished and he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. However, instead of just assuming that John 19 verse 30 has anything to do with Matthew chapter 5 verse 18, it is worth asking some questions. What was finished according to John? Was all that was prophesied in the law and prophets finished at that moment? Or was it simply the plan of salvation that was finished? Is accomplishing the plan of salvation the same thing as accomplishing all things recorded in the Law and Prophets? 
One problem with interpreting Christ's work on the cross as the moment all was accomplished is that it contradicts the previous statement that nothing will pass away until heaven and earth pass away. So we can't interpret Yeshua's second statement in a way that contradicts his first statement. So we might ask, have heaven and earth passed away? Peter was writing after the cross event, and he still considered heaven and earth passing away to be something that takes place in the future. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 13. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Even if heaven and earth passing away was only figurative, we consider it as likely a literal event, Peter states that heaven and earth have not yet passed away. This also means that all has not yet been accomplished. We are still looking forward to that prophetic event. As we've suggested, a better approach, then, is to understand heaven and earth passing away and all being accomplished to refer to the same future event. It should be no surprise that Yeshua mentions such criteria in the same sentence as it relates to the law. The passing away of heaven and earth is when all things will be accomplished. It is as simple as that. Revelation 21 verse 1 and verses 5 through 6. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And starting in verse 5. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. When heaven and earth pass away, Yeshua says, It is done. This is the time when all things are accomplished. All of the law and prophets are now accomplished at this point. Everything is new. Everything is restored. All prophecy is fulfilled at this point. Also note that in Revelation 21 and Isaiah 65 verse 17, it is the first heaven and first earth that pass away. Regardless of whether you believe this is a literal or a figurative event, Yeshua said that nothing from the law will pass away until heaven and earth pass away. The first heaven and earth are still here. They haven't passed away yet, and they won't until Revelation 21, when the former things are no longer remembered. Removing anything from the law before this event would not only be premature, but against God's plan. Some will say, we don't have to keep the law of God for salvation. And we would completely agree. Yeshua observed all the law perfectly so that we do not have to observe God's law for salvation. No one has ever been able to keep God's law for salvation. All believers since Adam and Eve were saved by grace through faith. This is the only way. Those before the cross looked forward to the means of salvation, and those after the cross looked back. There is no change in the process of salvation. So then, it is true we do not have to keep God's law but only in the context of salvation, and that has always been the case. Yet in Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 19, our Messiah teaches obedience, not for salvation, but because of our salvation. We know this because Yeshua begins discussing rewards for believers based on whether they removed anything from the law of God and their teachings. Thus, there are consequences to removing anything from the law of God. Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. If a believer teaches fewer commandments, they are going to be least in the kingdom. If a believer teaches all commandments, they're going to be great in the kingdom. These are not salvational consequences. These are rewards, or even a lack thereof, for those who are already in the plan of salvation based on our level of practicing and teaching obedience. This should be simple to understand. We all understand that breaking God's law is sin, 1 John 3, 4. Believers who sin more, break God's law and teach others to do the same, will be least in the kingdom as part of their eternal rewards. Those who sin less and teach others obedience to the law of God will be great in the kingdom. These are rewards based on our observance of fulfilling the Great Commission, Matthew chapter 28. 
Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. We are to make disciples and teach them to obey everything that Yeshua taught. That includes his exhortation to be great in the kingdom by doing and teaching even the least of the commandments from the law, as we read in Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. We know without a doubt that Yeshua taught the law of God as written by Moses. Otherwise, he would have been a false prophet. For more on this, please see our teaching, the Deuteronomy 13 test. Thus, there is only one logical conclusion. As Matthew 5, 17 through 19 agrees, we are to teach all nations to obey everything out of the law of God as written by Moses. To say that we do not have to keep God's law just because Jesus kept it for us makes absolutely no sense. Yeshua was baptized as well. Should we say that baptism is unnecessary because Yeshua was baptized for us? Yeshua did not commit adultery. Should we say that we can now commit adultery because Yeshua refrained from adultery for us? Absolutely not. We are covered by grace when we fall into sin, which is in the context of our salvation. But that does not mean we should start ignoring commandments because of our grace. What faith in the word would we really have if we do not even have a real desire to live the same word that we profess to believe in. Romans 6. Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. Obedience is not to earn our salvation, but simply to be the evidence of our salvation. It is an expression of what we believe inwardly, which is the word of God. So we do not have to keep God's law for salvation, but we should keep God's law because we should not want to sin, and we should want to love Him and love others. That should sound rather acceptable, right? If we really believe in His grace for us, which is really His love for us, then how could we not want to love Him back by keeping His commandments? From the beginning, observing the law of God was always equated to loving God. For example, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 1. You shall therefore love Yahweh your God and keep his charge, his statutes, his rules, and his commandments always. We are to understand that we are to love God as he defines how he wants to be loved. John teaches the same thing, 1 John chapter 5. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. It is not up to us or anyone else to define how to love him. This is true with any successful marriage today. We don't inform our spouse how we are going to love them. They tell us how they want to be loved. So we have established that not one iota or dot of the law can be removed until all is accomplished. All is accomplished when heaven and earth pass away at the end of the age. When Yeshua says, it is done, and no more prophecy remains to be accomplished. But why? Is there a reason that God has to wait until heaven and earth pass away before it is even remotely possible for anything from the law to be removed? It turns out that there is a reason, a very good reason in fact. What is the relationship between heaven and earth and the law of God? Heaven and earth are the witnesses of the law of God being set before us. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 11, 16, and 19. Verse 11, For this commandment that I command you today is not too hard for you, neither is it far off. Verse 16, If you obey the commandments of Yahweh your God that I command you today, by loving Yahweh your God, by walking in His ways, and by keeping His commandments and His statutes and His rules. Verse 19, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live. Why does that matter? It matters because two or three witnesses establish a matter. 
This can only mean one thing, which is another reason why Yeshua taught what he did. Not only is heaven and earth passing away the last prophetic event before all the law and prophets are accomplished, but heaven and earth are the witnesses to the establishing of the law. The law of God is established until heaven and earth pass away, just like Yeshua says in Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 19. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, Whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Isn't this amazing? Simply looking up, heaven, or looking down, earth, is all the proof you need to show that the law of God has not passed away. Any believer teaching anything contrary to this will be least in the kingdom at best. Yeshua continues, verse 19. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Consider what Paul said about establishing the law. Romans chapter 3, verse 31. Do we then nullify the law through faith? May it never be. On the contrary, we establish the law. For more on what Paul taught on the law of God, we would recommend our series, The Pauline Paradox. So, as you walk the earth and you see the stars in the heavens, let that remind you that the same law of God that the Bible declares to be the way, the truth, the life, the light, perfect, and freedom still exists and is for us today. Notice that the law of God that Yeshua walked was the whole Word of God. And remember, He is our example. In our reading of Acts, we also realize that all of the apostles, including Paul, walked the same law of God that Yeshua did, even after the cross. This should not surprise us at all, for the New Covenant, Jeremiah 31, was to write the law of God, the Torah, on our heart, giving us the desire to do it not the desire to abolish it. So, with the words Yeshua said, the scriptural way to test doctrine, and the whole point of the New Covenant, why would we want to relax any of God's commandments? Let's love them back the way He intended. As it turns out, obedience and loving God is a blessing, just like He said. We hope that this teaching has blessed you. And remember, continue to test everything. Shalom. One Nineteen Ministries has produced hundreds of biblical teachings, and now you can own all of them on one physical device. We are excited to announce that our entire video library in HD quality is now available on a flash drive. This drive can be plugged into your PC, phone, tablet, or anything else with a USB or USB-C port. The drive also contains written transcripts of our teachings for those who prefer to read rather than watch. Of course, we still offer all of our material for free at testeverything.net, but having a physical copy will allow you to watch our videos anywhere and anytime without the need for an internet connection. Having a physical copy will also ensure that our teachings are available if we are ever removed from video websites, which is a danger that ministries around the world are facing more and more. We want to continue to reach as many people as possible. Now, you might be asking, but what about all the new teachings released every week? Well, in addition to receiving all our past teachings, your purchase comes with free updates for life. Each flash drive comes with instructions that will allow you to easily download and store new teachings as they are released. Or mail us in the flash drive once a year, and we will update it for you and send it back at no charge to you. We hope you are blessed by this new resource. And as always, any proceeds our ministry receives goes right back into producing more teachings. Get your 119 flash drive today 
by going to 119flashdrive.com.